David and Tom Moore, and we are shifting gears into the IRA side of the business, Tom. And, and uh, you know, it's sort of interesting because when we put that business together, we did it just to accommodate our 1031 clients wanting to, they want to diversify outside Wall Street. And, and that business we put together shortly before the last crash, right? And, yeah. and so during recessionary times, we sort of see that side of the business blossom a little bit because people are looking for diversification and, and just things, hard assets, tangible assets are the best inflation hedge there is. So what, what, do you, what are we sort of seeing with respect to that side and, and uh, what kind of comments or tips do you have for people? Yes, it, you're definitely right. We see a lot more uh, action on on the IRA side of the business, the self-directed IRAs. Um, when you get in these uncertain times and people are tired of seeing the stock market going through its ebbs and flows, I don't know if they're ebbs and flows as much as cliffs. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it's we get a lot of people who are looking to get into... Um, some form of real estate related assets or maybe they want to go into precious metals um, quite a bit of lending actually going on with people too and um, and I think that with the increased mortgage rates it becomes more attractive for for people with their IRAs to uh, to get into that. So, so you just talked about precious metals a little bit, and, and I've just got to ask you real quick, is, is there any such thing as a gold IRA, let's say? Um, well, the people will market gold IRAs yes. and so forth, but, but really it's uh, you have a, any self-directed IRA can buy into into uh, precious metals. Um, I think that the, the people who are uh, marketing gold IRAs, IRAs are, are, you know, it's specific to their company, and and uh, that's pretty much all you're going to be able to buy through them, as far as I know. Um, with a self-directed IRA, the ones that we set up for people, people will end up with, um, in most cases, an IRA LLC or checkbook IRA, and they are open to do all sorts of investing. Um, all of the all the ones I just mentioned. Uh, again, most of the people that we that we deal with are again trying to get into real estate related assets. Whether they're buying a, a rental property or they are acting as a a lender on on a uh, on a neighbor's purchase or loaning to a contractor. I yeah, so we've right. got a couple different contractors that are building yeah. developers that have actually put investment funds together, and and they use. Yeah, yeah, it's it's worked out great for a, a lot of these guys, uh, and some pretty big name developers have have done this, where they have a pool of of IRA investors. Uh, they've set up their self directed IRAs so that when when builder needs money, just goes to these individuals and and. Uh, and not having to go through uh, the typical channels for for construction financing. All the red tape yeah. that would be involved going through a traditional lender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the investor knows the product, uh, comfortable with it, and yeah, it's, it's worked out well for them. So if, if somebody was going to go out and, and they wanted to take their retirement money, and, and you know, most of the people, like when you and I put this company together, we did it as a combination to our 1031 clients, pretty much, mm -hmm. right? They just were looking for more avenues to use more money to go feed their, their, their real estate. And uh, as you said, I think most of our clients are, are either buying property or lending on property, but they've done a variety of other things, including business startups. But, you know, to do that, how, it, right now, if somebody comes to us, how long do you feel, what, what's your experience as, as far as timeline to get one of these accounts established? And is there anything that they should or should not be doing during that process? For example, you know, if they find a property before the thing's set up, can they write the offer or... Yeah, well, it's always good to do some planning, as yeah. we know. Um, it, it 
you can usually count on it taking about a month to get the thing set up from start to finish. We've got to get uh, all of our applications in, uh, get documentation put together to set up the self-directed accounts, uh, register LLCs, get operating agreements together, um, the transfers of funds from the client's existing account to the new custodial account, and subsequent investment from that account into the LLC. Uh, it's, it's going to take about a month. Um, as far as them going out and, and making offers on investments, uh, they can do so, but they cannot make the offer in their individual name or in any party, that, party name that is a disqualified party. Uh, and that's going to be themselves as the IRA owner, spouses, uh, family members that are of lineal descent, you know, parents, grandparents, children, grandchildren cannot make the offers and then assign it over to the LLC. So, so, has, so uh, for me, let's say you wanted to make an investment, the account wasn't set up. Mm -hmm. Could I, as your brother, write the offer? Good question. You could because you, as a sibling of mine, are not a disqualified party. Isn't that funny? So, so yeah, uh, you can have siblings, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, none of, the, none of those parties, none of those people are disqualified parties. So as long as it's done under those names, or you could, if you wanted to, you could draft up the, the uh, agreement under the IRA of your name, uh, but you cannot do it in your name and then assign it over to your IRA. That, that is a prohibited transaction. So, what's the old saying on planning? <laughs> <laughs> Those who yeah. fail to plan, plan to fail. Yeah. So the idea is you can do all this stuff, but you know, really, once again, you know, ask the questions early, get the thing ready before you go and jump on this stuff. Because I, I feel like you know, ten thirty one is over a hundred years old at this point. We still have. Too many people that call us after something's been purchased or sold, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, already I closed. Had, yeah, I had at least uh, probably three people last week who called up and they had already closed on a sale. One of, them, one of them said they hadn't received the money yet, but it was still too late to, to do it. And we've had some problems lately where people, somebody says, well, the sale fail happens and they want to just go ahead and make the purchase. And somebody will say, well, I'll just do a reverse exchange. If they've closed on that replacement property, yeah. Are we stuck? If, if they've already closed on any property uh, it's in, and it's not set up as an exchange, it's too late. Yeah. And, with, and with the IRA stuff, it's, it's really, so 1031 is over 100 years old at this point. The IRA biz, uh, you know, IRA biz, I shouldn't say IRAs, IRAs and 401ks came into play in the mid-70s. So they're not very old comparatively, yeah. but it just, it's just one of those things that the information available is just so minimal. And, yeah. and I think it's just people here, they can do something and then they just get excited and go do it. And then they call us after the fact. And then it's yeah. really hard to clean stuff up because of the prohibited transaction rules. Yeah. And, and back to the planning real quickly, um, we can certainly set these things up where you don't have to pull all of your money from its current investment to get these things going. So you have uh, the ability to make an offer. A lot of times we have people that will say, well, let's, let's just get enough money into this account. We'll sell off some of our stocks over here and we'll move enough money over this over to this new account so that we have enough money to make an earnest money deposit uh, should the right pro property come, come around. Uh, so that happens quite regularly. We'll, we'll have uh, people will, that will transfer over 20 or 30,000 and they've got that sitting in their account so that if property pops up and they want to make an offer, they can go ahead and write that offer uh, that day and put down an earnest money deposit. And if everything's agreed to, then they just move the rest of the money over. So if somebody wants to put one of these accounts together, is it all or nothing? Or no, absolutely not. No, it's uh, um, you know a lot. Of, a lot of people we deal with have got multiple IRAs or four hundred one k rollovers from previous jobs and. And uh, they might take some of that money and, and put it into one of these accounts. And, and uh, the question also comes up, well, can I have my IRA LLC, the self-directed, also invested in stocks and bonds? And yeah, they can. So you know, a, a quick scenario on that might be somebody goes out and buys an investment property. They've got rental income on that property. 
and that rental income's not enough to go out and buy another investment um, like real estate, but it's earning nothing in the bank. They might open up a brokerage account uh, in the LLC name, and that way they can have that money sitting in the stock market as well. Great. Well, thank you for those explanations. Dave and Tom Moore, IRA Advantage, IRAAdvantage.com. Thank you. We'll thank you. Be right back. Perfect.